I hope you had a chance maybe to meet somebody new today and uh, introduce your, yourself to them, how good it is to know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ binds us together uh, in him for eternity, and that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the opportunity to testify to his grace and mercy. We have another one of those opportunities this morning with one of our confirmads, Corbin Bryant. Come on, Corbin, come on up here with me, would you please? Thank you. Corbin's a young man uh, among us that just a few weeks ago we celebrated his baptism as he's preparing for his confirmation in, uh, in the mid middle of September. This is Corbin. Corbin, how, how are you today? You all right? A little less nervous than first time? Yeah, me too. Okay, good. Uh, how old are you, uh, Corbin? 11. You're 11 years old, and you go to which school? Stuart Strap, you're a sixth grader, right? Yeah, good, okay. So uh, in first service, when I asked Corbin, what are some things you, you like to do, what'd you tell me? Gaming. Va gaming, yeah. And I, and I had discovered this last week that there are gamers on YouTube who are making two to $3,000 a week. Watching, they're having people watch them play video games. You can do that someday? But I, but, but I tell you what, I also found out something else from your grandmother. You play the piano. And you ride motorcycles. So those are some other things you like to do, right? Okay, good. So besides gaming, yeah. And you like to talk about the Lord and share your love for him as you know his love for you and his life. Come on up. Let's, um, let's have your, what does Jesus mean to me, uh, sharing today. Let's pray over you first, though, as we gather this morning. Father in heaven, thank you for the blessing that Corbin knows in his life of your great love and mercy, his, uh, your grace in him. And for the privilege of sharing now uh, that testimony of faith, which is his, as you've worked that faith in him. So, bless Corbin this morning now. Uh, calm his nerves a little bit. and Thank you, Lord, for hearing uh, this blessing of him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Corbin. Let me stand here again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who is Jesus to me? Jesus is my Savior. He is my friend. He is, he is my comfort when I pray. Jesus to me is love. What does his presence in my life mean to me? His presence means my sins are forgiven when I confess them, that he loves me no matter what I do. It means I'm going to heaven because he died for me and he washed away my sins. It means I'll never be alone because he is always by my side, no matter where I go. If I have problems in my life, I know I can pray to Jesus and he will help, guide and he will help me and guide me and he always answers my prayers in his time. How will I show his presence in my life? By loving people, by forgiving them when they hurt me, by helping the needy and showing respect and kindness to all people and to always be honest by telling others that Jesus is my savior. Thank you, Corbin. We give praise to the Lord for that powerful testimony, right? That is clearly the word of the Lord in his life. Corbin, thank you. And uh, it, it is also appropriate for us to say thanks to your grandmother, Bonnie, and your grandfather, Arnett, your gra step-grandfather, Tim, who are raising you in the faith and bringing you in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And for you to uh, be able to give this uh, testimony today is a powerful witness of, of their uh, care for you. And we give thanks to the Lord for them and look forward to your confirmation in just a few weeks, right? All right, good. Thank you, Corbin. Blessings to you. Our young disciples, if you'd like to go with Maddie, she's here for Children's Church today. Any of you are here and would like to go with her, feel, please feel free to do so. Thank you, Maddie, for your continued ministry uh, to our congregation for our Children's Church ministry. And we hear the word of the Lord for us today. Moving through this Pentecost season, a season of growth and, and life and maturity in Christ Jesus. Come, friends, let's hear the word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Spirit through the book of First Kings. The prophet Elijah experienced serious fatigue and discouragement following his two great spiritual victories, and God allowed him to rest and eat before going back to his mission. The first reading beginning at verse 1. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. 
He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from from the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church in Ephesus and to us. The Spirit encourages the Ephesians and us to leave behind the old ways of living and the sin in, in their lives now that they are followers of Christ. The second reading beginning at verse 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to the sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, Each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up, building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as beloved, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Scott and Barbara, for sharing with us the word of the Lord as Jesus gives to us the gospel. He's the bread of life. Come, let's sing of that. Won't you rise with me and let's sing. I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and who believes in me shall not thirst. 
no one can come to me unless the Father beckons. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world, and you will raise me up, and you will raise me up, and you will raise me up on the last as day. The truth we just sung of, listen to them in the gospel of our Lord, from the gospel according to the Apostle John in chapter 6, starting at verse 35. We're told by the Spirit that those who put their faith in Jesus, Jesus is the bread of life, and they will be resurrected from physical death to eternal life. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but I will raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Well, stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus replied. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the Christ be praised, the living Lord among us be praised and exalted as we confess that faith to which we've been called. We use the words this morning of the Apostles' Creed and declare, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Amen, my friends. Please be seated. As we hear the word of the Lord for us this morning, in this Pentecost season, as we continue to enjoy the truth from God's word, celebrating Jesus is Lord. He is God, the Lord, and he is our Lord, known by each one of us personally as God's grace has found us and called us into his kingdom as we are claimed as his children. We continue with this theme today as Jesus gives to us again for the second week in a row this truth where he tells us, I am the bread of life. You know that in Hebrew writing or when Hebrews would speak, for them to, to, to write or say or speak something two times in a row, it's something really important. It's one, they're wanting us to, to perk our ears up and listen because this is a truth that God wants us to be embraced in and to know. This is the second week in a row that we hear a gospel reading where Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. And what that means for us then as God's people embraced in the, the gift of faith, the truth of his kingdom, what Jesus is saying to us about him being our bread of life is more than just what we can hold in our hands and eat and consume, or if we hoard it like the Israelites did, it becomes moldy and inedible. What Jesus is talking about is more than what he gave to more than 5,000 people on the mountainside in this miraculous feeding of the 5,000 plus women and children. When Jesus talks about being the bread of life, he's talking about that which we take in and consume as people of faith, as members of his kingdom, for our eternal well-being, even as we live now. Jesus is our sustenance. And we can talk about, as Jesus is Lord, today we can, we can think about Jesus is our confidence. When Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, he is our confidence in life and in living. This last year, 2018, we've been raising up Bible verses each month for us to memorize. We're going to go through several, several of them today in this time of the message as they pertain to this gift of Jesus, the bread of life, our confidence as we live in faith. So let's start with this one. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. For faith doesn't walk by sight. It walks in confidence that faith that we've been given is leading and guiding the way because faith is of God. And that's what we hope for. Certain of what we don't see is, is the working of the Lord among us in eternity, our, our eternal salvation. But even now, today, these days. And yet, what are we, what are we comfortable with? We're, we're confident in our own selves to live day by day by what we see, right? What do you see? It took me the longest time. In fact, I didn't believe it until I was told it, that there are two animals in this picture. The one animal that I saw right away was the duck. His beak goes off to the left. I could not believe that there was something else in this picture other than the duck until I was told that there was and where it was. There's also a bunny rabbit. You see the bunny rabbit too? There's a duck and a bunny rabbit. Didn't believe it until I was told it. Now, that's a pretty simple example of, of faith, uh, of how we operate in, in life by what we see. And it's not until we're revealed the truth that then maybe we believe or understand or even can accept what's been given to us. So we see today that when Jesus was speaking the truth that he is the bread of life, the Jews were struggling with this as well. They began to grumble about Jesus, we're told, because Jesus had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. What they were seeing was a human being. This bread from heaven, they couldn't grasp. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't understand it. 
And so they grumbled because they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Because this is what we see and can understand. How can this Jesus, this person of our community, then say he's the bread coming down from heaven? Well, faith knows that. And faith believes that. And faith takes that in and understands it then and follows in those ways. But without faith, all we see is what we want to see. And so, how can he now say, I came down from heaven? And so often we find ourselves living by what we see and know and understand. How confident can you be in what you see and know and understand? Let me give you another test. What do you see? How confident are you in what you're seeing that you know and understand that? This picture was taken by a friend of this young man from Germany. He's actually lying on the ground, standing on a post sticking up out of the ground, looking down an alleyway. Can you see it? It looks like he's ready to step off of a ledge, doesn't it? How confident would your answer have been in, in saying, well, yeah, he's looking down a shaft, ready to fall to his death if he steps off? No, nope, he's, he's laying on the ground with his head off the ground a little bit on a pillar that's sticking out of the ground, looking down an alleyway. Now how confident are you in what you understand and see and think is true in life, right? Again, the word of the Lord calls us into a living relationship of faith in him. And we've known it this way as we've memorized it. I, I thought it would be a good idea maybe to refresh ourselves today in the, in the Hebrew, uh, in this. Betach el Adonai bechol lebikach. Did no one join in with me? Oh, you know it this way. Trust in the Lord. Come on, say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. That's faith at work that recognizes the hand of the Lord to give us an understanding and a direction and a confidence in life to say, Lord, in the midst of even what my checkbook looks like, in the midst of how things are going at work, in the midst of the relationships you've given me that are really a struggle right now, I can live in confidence by faith knowing that you are Lord even in the situations that all I can see is an alleyway, a duck, a bunny. I'm confident in you, Lord. Faith has confidence in you that you're going to work all of this out for my good because, as I know, we walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. Maybe God is saying to us, I really don't care what you see, <laughs> what you know, or what makes sense to you from where you are. I've called you to walk by faith, trust, belief, confidence in me. And faith in Jesus Christ, confidence in him, gives life to where there would otherwise be dead ends and death. Faith in Jesus Christ recognizes that he is the one who has conquered our dead ends and given us a new perspective to simply what we see here and now, which is wrong, ungodly, not of his kingdom. That where we need the forgiveness of our sins to bring us into a kingdom perspective of what he wants us to know and understand and live by and trust and have confidence in him is to know that Jesus Christ is the one who has given his life that we might live anew by faith in confidence in him. It's the putting off of the old 
and the putting on of the new. It's to live by faith, not by sight. It's that list of righteous deeds that define us, as Paul wrote to the Christians in Ephesus, that show that we live as members of faith in his kingdom because of his work in us. That Jesus has called us from that old way, blind, human knowledge way of thinking into a new relationship that has confidence in him, that trusts in him no matter what we see, no matter how limited our view and understanding might be. In fact, what it says uh, to us as God's people, for us this month in the Bible verse, I believe, Lord, <laughs> help my unbelief. Help me in my unbelief. Help me overcome my unbelief. I don't want to live in unbelief. I want to live in, be- I want to believe. I do believe. So help me, Lord. Help me, then, to live in the confidence of faith into which you've called me. A confidence of faith that sees you, then, in what you've told me. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What do you mean there, Lord? How is it that you want my eyes of faith to be opened in a new way? To see you as you've given yourself to me. One of the ways that we can see Jesus saying, I'm the bread of life, and what that means for us, is that we live in the confidence of faith in these days now that he will sustain us with what we need. Not just a piece of bread in our hand, but with a living faith Yet that gives us a faith perspective in all that we're about in life. Work, relationships, managing God's resources, trusting him in situations of life in which there seems to be nothing but a step off the ledge into a a well of despair or death. Lord, help my unbelief. Because I believe you've called me in this faith and I live with your confidence in me. That's faith that trusts and believes. Not only for the days, the journey, the steps ahead, today, tomorrow, this next week, but for our eternity. Lord, I believe that you are the Lord of my eternity. Help my unbelief when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I'm torn apart in grief and loss and I may be even a little bit scared of the end of my days. The devil likes to shake my foundations and wonder if if your gift of salvation is really real. I believe, Lord. Help me in my unbelief. In life, in death, we have confidence. We have confidence as he's called us by faith to believe Jesus is Lord. He's your Lord and mine. As he lives in us, And he lets us, he allows us, he calls us to see him, and to follow in his ways, to believe as people of his kingdom of faith, he is Lord. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I admit that so often, every day, in situations coming and going, I I make decisions based on what I see. And yet, Lord, I also need to admit that so often what I see is not the reality of faith at work. I believe that you are my Lord, so help my unbelief and move me in a way to live and act and move and respond by faith, by a confidence that trusts you no matter what, for you are Lord. In Jesus' name. We praise you and we pray. Amen. May the peace of God that passes our understanding keep our hearts, our minds, our faith confident in him. Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.